All right, so you sent us things you've heard or seen about the Clinton campaign and their campaign finances. I've got them right here. So we're gonna tell you if they're fact or fiction. First, the idea that Clinton Foundation funds go to the Clinton campaign. That is definitely fiction. Mm -hmm. And we can tell you that because the funding sources for the campaign and for the Clinton Foundation are all online for the Clinton campaign that's also regulated by the FEC. You can go online and see where the funds come from. You can see that there's not crossover, there's not money going back and forth. Also, I've seen people say that only 10% of donations to the Clinton Foundation actually go to charity. That's not true at all. Independent studies have found that 88% of donations to the Clinton Foundation go to charitable causes like fighting poverty, or seeking health access. Charity Watch, which is a website that ranks the efficiency of charities, actually gave the Clinton Foundation an A grade. That's better than the grade they gave to the American Red Cross, far better than the grade that the Wounded Warriors Project got. It's actually a pretty efficient and pretty charitable charity. One down. All right, next. Clinton approved the sale of uranium to Russia to line her own pockets. Now, this is mostly mm. fiction, but there is some truth to it, so stay with us. Well, nine investors in the deal funneled $145 million to the Clinton Foundation. A few points. One, Hillary Clinton herself did not make this decision single-handedly. Nine different federal agencies, including the State Department, but also the Defense Department, the Justice Department, and the Treasury Department, and a few others, signed off on this. Additionally, the guy at the State Department who was tasked with making this decision, who led the committee, told Time Magazine that Hillary Clinton never interfered with his decision. Secondly, we're not talking about a lot of uranium here. The U.S. produces only about 2% of the world's uranium, and the company that we're talking about, the Canadian-based company that Russia acquired, produces about 11% of the U.S.'s uranium. What's more likely is that Russia was interested in the Kazakhstan holdings that the Canadian company had. Kazakhstan produces a lot more uranium. And finally, most of those donations that were made to the Clinton Foundation were made before or during her 2008 presidential run, when there was little to no chance she knew she was going to become the U.S. Secretary of State, which makes the entire idea of a quid pro quo kind of far-fetched. But on a related note, Bill Clinton took $500,000 for a speech in Moscow, and that is a cold, hard fact. Speaking gigs are typically a pretty sweet deal for ex-presidents, and Bill Clinton has seriously cashed in on this. Between the time Bill Clinton left the presidency and Hillary Clinton left the State Department, Bill Clinton made 13 speeches, which he received $500,000 or more for. One of those speeches was in Moscow, and it was paid for by a Russian bank with ties to the Kremlin, and that was after Russia had expressed interest in buying that uranium company based in Canada that we mentioned earlier. That was first reported in the book Clinton Cash. Now that book didn't find any evidence of a deal being made, but it's a pretty egregious conflict of interest for the State Department and for the Clintons. For Newsy, I'm Zach Toombs.